thank you for inviting me and for presenting the GIGOS DOI working group. I know many of my slides you already know, so I will just summarize them, but I would like to, to start bringing things together, what we have discussed. So we are existing since October 2019. We had a first in-person meeting at AGU. This was actually the only meeting because afterwards we had the pandemic and we couldn't meet anymore except for online. We are now about 40 members and associated members together and are meeting regularly to discuss everything around DOIs. Hang on, how can I? <laughs> Martin, I think this thing is, um, oh, we'll see. We mainly discuss, of course, we discuss DUI related topics during our regu regular video conferences. We address topics on the granularity of the DUIs. We, we will recommend, we have discussed hierarchical DUIs, DUIs for products or networks. We have touched the FAIR principles, making data findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable, persistent identifier and of course metadata. We were regularly um, presented during EGU, AGU, GIGOS days, um, IAG, General Assemblies, and almost all the opportunities we had to, to pr bring news on, the, on our group. And after more than two years, I would like to say that the group was established perfectly at the right time, because there is a large interest in using DUIs for data across the geodetic community. People are more and more speaking about the FAIR principles, there are new projects coming, and of course there is an increasing need for credit to show the value and also the usage of geodetic products and bring credit to the producers and especially the institutions. And we can observe increasing DOI-related activities for geodetic data on an international scale. What we can already say is that we cannot provide a single one-fits-all one solution because geodetic data is so different and it may require different solutions, well, it must require different solutions. Um, okay. Um, I'm summarizing our outcomes. We started off agreeing on that we, if possible, prefer DOIs to product types or observational networks and not to assign DOIs to individual daily data files, for example. So we were thinking about GNSS networks, reprocessing products, temporal gravity models that are also time series campaign data. Oops, sorry. All, and of course, all the static data that, that are available like GEOID models, gravity models and others, or campaign data for GNSS, for example. And these DOIs for growing time series are very similar to those um, the seismological communities using for their networks and they shall mainly serve for citation purposes and not, as I said, for identifying individual data streams. Um, we have already discovered a, a flow, a, how can we say, a flaw in the soup that I will discuss later on, but this was our first agreement. I think for many of the data we can, we can use this recommendation. We have already discussed and this is what I told before, um, whether or not we shall provide DOIs for um, geodetic products that are rapidly outdated, rapid ultra rapid products. And we have agreed that also there is not a unique fit, one fit all solution, but um, data centers who are archiving these rapid and ultra rapid products, I don't know why this is happening, um, and who are archiving it for the long term. They can use DOIs whereas others like the ESA who have who are managing a more, more rolling archive don't or won't use it. Um, we have developed the concept for using DOIs for hierarchical data on the example of cost G. On the lower part you see individual solutions produced by different analysis centers that then contribute to the combination product and as you see each product um, and of course the combination product has an individual DOI. For this example we made sure that the authors of the products of the analysis centers are also co-authors on the cost G combination product and the relation 
between all these components can be done via the data site metadata. And the example here is that we say is part of like the individual data, like the individual product, like for, for Gravis, for example, is part of the cost G combination product. And um, the combination product says I'm derived from the Gravis product, um, the IU, uh, the, the Swiss um, product and all the others. So this was a was a concept that we have already implemented with COSC G. Why did was this going on? Um, and the uh, Daniela Taller um, said that the um, for the International Terrestrial Reference Frame 2020, they would like to apply to this theory to this model that that we do some different um, hierarchies of of DOIs, um, and they're currently in preparation for doing this. Um, as far as I know, BKG has now the possibility to also mint DOIs. They have joined a, a German data site consortium. And so I'm really looking forward to see what, what's coming out there. Um, we do, and this is what I also mentioned, a flourishing new DOI service for GWEED models together with IG, ISG and GFZ data services. And um, as of today, we have 29 registered DOIs for GWEED models and quasi GWEED models. Six are currently in final stages of being reviewed. And I know Mirko already announced me that there will be many more requests in the, in the upcoming days. So this is really a very successful. And what, what we all expected was that we start with some models and then others might be interested of, of getting DOIs and this is actually happening. What we recently discussed with Martin was the possibility to, to um, also reference GIGOS text publications. For example, the strategic plan, the GIGOS implementation plan, possibly the terms of references that is, of course, published within the GeoDesis handbook. But um, this handbook has many, many chapters that are written by individual groups and people and is only assigned with one DOI for the full book. So we will um, we will explore possibilities to either agree with Springer Nature that this is in not only with GIGOS but also with IAG to agree uh, to discuss with Springer Nature about possibilities to to assign individual DOIs for chapters or else possibly think about you republishing the open access papers from the geodesist handbook, the, the chapters as individual um, publications as part of the geodesist handbook by a different DOI provider. Um, the idea is to use a uniform layout. This is something that Martin has developed. Um, he, he made some suggestions and discussed during the EC a few weeks ago. And this was the the winner of four of four um, layouts that like there will be a branding GIGOS GIGOS reports, um, and this will be a collaboration again with GIGOS, IAG, and GFZ Data Services, who will be the DOI provider. But the reports, of course, are published by GIGOS or IAG. This is so. Um, and now I will. I think especially in the last months, um, we have heavily discussed GNSS data also because of the um, FAIR GNSS project that is led by Karine Brunjung in, in Royal Observatory of Belgium. They are currently developing uh, a, a huge geodetic or GNSS data portal and they would like to turn GNSS products into FAIR digital objects. And um, this discussions along um, across this um, this uh, project because Karin is very active in the GIGOS DOI groups has identified certain um, complexity of GNSS data with respect to networks. For example, a GNSS network may be managed by one agency but not all agency organize their GNSS stations as networks. This is difficulty so if we decide on using network DOIs we might lose many, many stations because they are not organized as networks. Moreover, even though agencies might use networks, 
some, not all GNSS stations are associated with the network. And also, if we would like to follow the seismological example with the Federation of Digital Seismic Network, a central agency for getting, for, for managing all these network DOIs, um, this would be required for GNSS data too. But I guess it's, it's highly, it's, it's, it's even more complicated than managing it on the seismological, very hierarchical um, seismic networks. Some networks have different licenses for different product types of the same network. So this also makes it difficult to use one DOI for everything within a network. And some networks are only making parts of the data available. And some stations are not par are part of several networks. So that's really, it's, it's much more complicated. So the solution, and this is also um, proposed by, by Karin and the FAIR GNSS pro project, that we use, we, we have to use DOIs for the data measured with one GS, GNSS stations. So we do not assign the DOI to the instruments themselves. This is another granularity, but also possible, but we are now speaking about DOI for the data measured with one GNSS station. Um, it facilitates, for example, the, pay, the case where we can say we have different data products different, derived from the, the same station that may have different DOIs with different individual licenses, but, but still the, the object or like the, the DOI is provided to the data from the station. If we then go on and we have a number of GNSS stations, each with their own DOIs and their, um, the data attached to them, we can construct networks, for example. This is GNSS network A. It has the stations number one to seven. Then we have GNSS network B and suddenly it turns out that station six and seven belongs to two networks. And then we have this little number 11 to the lower right that doesn't have relation to any network at all. And all these relations between the stations and the networks can be done via the machine readable metadata. So data site metadata provides options to say, for example, stations one to seven are part of network A, while stations seven to 10 are part of network B, six and seven, etc. pp. And the precondition for making these kind of connections between the stations and their data and the networks is really to use um, station DOIs, well, DOIs for data for the stations. Um, Hang on, this gets nicht weiter. Okay, and having this, bearing this in mind, we, we made a step further and really began to, to develop metadata recommendations for GNSS data. And for this, especially with the prospect of using, of, of implementing the FAIR principles, we need to speak about persistent identifiers because they are key for FAIR data. What I'm speaking of is that we, we use, of course, DOIs for data, for software, for text, but um, we also, it's highly recommended to use org IDs in case we have individual persons who are, for example, pro producing a, or authoring a, a GNSS campaign network, a campaign data. And whenever there's an individual person, we recommend to include the ORCID. For institutions, we can use the, the raw identifier, which is also a unique way to overcome different spelling conditions or name changes of, of centers. I could give you a list of, GF, of 10 different names for GFZ and they're all combined with the raw identifier. And also what could be interesting for, for GNSS, for GPS data is, or no, for geodetic data is, to explore the, the Crossref funders registry, which is a list of funders assigned with DOI and with the same purpose of um, overcoming different spellings with, um, is it the German Research Association or the Research Foundation, or is it the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft? All these are combined. And the best about all these persistent identifiers is they can be expressed as resolvable link and the link can then be included in the machine readable metadata that can be directly analyzed and found by, by computers and this is one of the key one of the key strategy for for implementing fair data um, oops so um, we have had initial discussions also to um, with a with a people from, from the FAIR GNSS project and members of the GIGOS infrastructure group. 
that are currently further developing GeoDZ ML, just to make sure that we, we include all the facets of, um, of metadata activities currently ongoing. And we had the meeting last week where we, I think, prepared um, our, our, our outcomes or like our suggestions such that we can discuss it with a GIGOS DY working group that will be meeting in June if, if possible. <clears throat> For all this, the FAIR principles are key guidelines. We try to retrieve as much metadata from site logs or GeoDZML in, in case of GNSS data. We always recommend to include these PIDs that I have just in introduced in both in the data site metadata, but also in GeoDZML to really make sure that we don't need to do any manual metadata generation, but to have it either here or there and also to define relation types as a recommendation. Um, we would even go further to develop recommendations of content that is filling specific data site fields. And we hope that these can also be used um, beyond GNSS data. For example, we will suggest that, for example, the repository where the data are stored or the data center equals the publisher for data site. The, ag the agency is the creator and we can we would recommend that local partners who are taking care of the instruments, for example, are listed as contributors to also provide credit for them. Um, the expected output is a document describing these recommendations similar to the existing FDSN recommendations for seismic networks. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Um, any comments or questions to Kirsten? Um, ich kann den nicht trennen. Scheiße. Ah. Am I still sharing my screen? Ah, oh, here we go. Sorry. Oh. Uh, Karsten, you mentioned that uh, you're planning to uh, develop uh, recommendations. Uh, yes. So, uh, w w when do you plan to uh, develop? I, I mean, uh, uh, do you have any uh, idea about uh, uh, when when you uh, finalize that recommendation? Well, we have um, we have. Uh, discussed it already during our last GIGOS DY working group meeting and then we have had an internal discussion as I mentioned. Um, I have just sent around a doodle for the next meeting during which we will agree and discuss our recommendations with the um, GIGOS DY working group and then we need to write it down. So I, I hope after summer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will be traveling for five weeks, so I won't be able to write during summer, but then, but the, the thing is that Karin and Anna Milio want to, want to start assigning DOIs to their seismic stations as mm -hmm. part of their FAIR GNSS project. So um, mm -hmm. they really push to have it done. And we had a really fruitful discussion also with Markus Bratke, who's highly involved in the geodesy and ML. So I guess we have, um, and we have included the UNAFCO DOIs that are already existing. So I mm. think it can't take long. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah, just because uh, we are also uh, operating our thousand three hundred Genesis stations in Japan. So mm -hmm. uh, DOIs for uh, GNSS data is a uh, very, very uh, important issue for us. So yeah. I really appreciate your effort. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs>